This is McFly Angler. starts now. To start, we will need a jig hook like these 9230s from Risen Fly. And we will also need to pair a tungsten slotted bead with the hook, like these really cool looking dirty olive ones also from Risen Fly. The easiest way to put the bead on the hook is to place the bead in your hand and bring the hook point to the bead. Place the hook point and bead securely in your vise. Note that the bead needs to be oriented the right way to seat properly into the hook bend. For thread, I really like this Vivas 10 knot, and today I'm using brown. Start the thread right behind the bead and snip or snap off the waist. Then build a bit of a thread bump in between the bead slot and behind the bead to keep it locked into place. Bring your thread down slightly into the bend of the hook and then back up to the hook eye shy of the bead. Now we need some micro ultra chenille. Or if you're getting this brand, they call it super chenille. And today I'm using chartreuse. Cut enough length to work with, maybe about two to four inches. Then burn the tip of the chenille with a lighter to form a round darkened spot at the end of the chenille. Measure the chenille so it's about a quarter of the hook shank length off the back of the hook. And then tie it down with some tight wraps, all the way back to the hook bend. Then cut off the waist. Now we need some black or brown soft hackle. This whiting hen fly saddle will work perfectly. You want some short fibers, so I'm grabbing the smallest feathers towards the bottom here. Technically, actually, I think it's the top of the saddle. To prepare this feather for tie-in, strip off the fibers where you can see that they change to fuzzy. Now we don't need many, so I'm actually stripping off even more than just the fuzzy ones. Now that the fuzzies are stripped off, grab just the tip of the feather and stroke the remaining fibers down to leave a small tie-in tag. It also helps to cut the excess part of the tag off close to leave just a triangular tie-in like this. The feathers curve as you can see, and you will want to tie this in on the side of the hook so the curve is angling in towards the fly. Grab the stem of the feather with this type hackle plier and proceed to make touching wraps while stroking back the fibers with each wrap. This will form what looks like legs of a caddis trying to pull itself out of its casing. Tie down the stem with tight wraps and then clip it off close. Actually, a trick is to wrap back up on the stem so it won't pull loose, and then just snap it off with a quick tug. Wrap back up on top of the fibers to angle them rearward, and then we need some wire. Now, if you remember last week, I had a spool that was almost spent. The wire section I pulled off was enough to tie many flies, and I needed the same wire for this fly, so I'm just going to use it. It is a brassy size gold wire. A trick to tie in the wire is to stick the tip of the wire between the tungsten slot to hold it and keep it from spinning. And then make tight wraps, keeping the wire even on top of the fly. Wrap up to the bead and then back down to the feather legs. Now we need some dubbing. I find rabbit dubbing works really well because it has some guard hairs and dubs on really evenly. And today I'm using the dark olive brown color, but really you could use any combo of dubbing, bead, chenille, and even feather colors here. Just try to match the caddis and their casings at your local creeks and streams. Okay, dub on a fairly thick and messy looking noodle, and then proceed to make touching wraps up the hook shank, trying to create an even body. Add more dubbing if you need to ensure that you get all the way up to the bead. Now create a bit of a ribbing and add a little bit of shininess by making spiral wraps over the dubbing with the wire and then capture it with some tight wraps and you can simply just helicopter the wire off flush. Now you can whip finish your fly, but try to end with the whip finish on top of the hook like so. Okay, you could use any type of head cement here, but my favorite is this Solar Res Ultra Thin Resin. It comes with a handy paintbrush that you can use to dab a little onto the whip finish before curing it with your UV light. It will help keep this fly from coming apart through multiple fish strikes. And there we have it, the finished Peking Caddis. Throughout most rivers, you will find little caddis casings stuck to the bottom of rocks or driftwood. They can be shaped in little boxy rectangles or cylinders. Some of them use little bits of wood, some use pebbles, and they are about as versed in colors as the caddis themselves. So go to your local river and pick up a few rocks to inspect your local bugs and see what best colors will mimic them. 
Let me know in the comment section what color caddis and casings are in your local river. As you all know, I've gotten you all discounts from www.risenfly.com. They manufacture all their own hooks, rods, reels, fly tying tools, and other great gear for fly fishing. Not only are the prices at their shop great already, but like I said, they're offering you all 15% off of your first order with them. So go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for a discount on your entire cart. I want to also thank all my Patreons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can support this channel and get some great perks like early access to my videos, one-on-one -on -one help with questions on tying and fishing, and even discounts on flies I tie and sell. Yes, that's right. I do sell flies hand-tied by me. If you want to order, you can do so through Patreon for that discount, or just place an order by finding me on Instagram or Facebook. Or if you don't use social media, you can go to my YouTube homepage, click the About section, and click View Email Address and email me with your order. Now, I don't check that email often, so make sure you comment on one of my videos and let me know you sent me an email. I also thank all of you who share all my videos and your continued support by hitting the like button and being my subscriber. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.